Having a great thumbnail increases your click-through rate and also your views. And in this video, we will be creating this thumbnail you just clicked on. What's up everyone, Jelle here with the Video Nerd and welcome to the Fortnite thumbnail tutorial. If this is your first time here and you're a gamer that wants to grow your online presence with gaming online by streaming, creating videos, etc. Then make sure to subscribe because this channel is just perfect for you. In this tutorial I will show you a lot of things which you can use to create awesome Fortnite thumbnails and we will just start right now. So right here we are in Photoshop and this is the end result of the thumbnail we will be creating right now. Now before starting I will guide you through the thought process that went into preparing this thumbnail because I never just start throwing things together till I get something that works. No before starting to create my thumbnail I always take a look at the competition because that's very important. So I knew that my title would be how to make a Fortnite thumbnail with Photoshop. So what did I do? I went to YouTube okay and then I just type in the title how to make right here a Fortnite thumbnail with Photoshop I click OK let's make it full screen and right here you can see that this will be my competition now I assumed that I would be ranking on the first page not because I'm overconfident but because when you are not ranking on the first page there's no real way of predicting your competition so you should assume that you're ranking kind of on top for the phrase that you want to rank for so what did I do next I took the snipping tool and I took a screenshot of these thumbnails right here. Then I saved it to my desktop. Okay, let's save it. And then I did drag it to Photoshop. So right here it is. Drag it to Photoshop to a new tab. And right here we have our competition. And later when we are creating the thumbnail, we can add it right here on one of these thumbnails to kind of take a look at how it would look compared to the other ones. But before starting to create it, of course you need a general color that you will be using for your thumbnail. And you should choose the color that you are not seeing in the first search results. So what do I see a lot right here? Blue, white, blue, blue right here green blue a bit of purple so pink and purple would be very good to rank against these right here so that's what i wanted to use for my thumbnail so let's just start creating our thumbnail you go to file click on new and then create a new file that's 1920 by 1080 okay 72 pixels per inch should be good and then just click on create and right here is our empty thumbnail now instead of browsing the internet for good backgrounds and characters or objects to put on the foreground i have a really great graphics pack for you that's made by my friend zortec on youtube i will link to his video on the graphics pack in the description. This is the graphics pack and right here there are a lot of assets. For example 3D models, these are a bunch of 3D models. But you kind of have to look through the whole package because some things are spread out etc. I will just show you right now which ones I picked for this thumbnail. Okay so for the background I went to cinematic backgrounds then again cinematic backgrounds and then right here this looked very nice for me because of the purple background. This is the one I used so let's just drag it to Photoshop release okay and right here press enter for now we can rescale it afterwards etc but for now let's place it here go back to the graphics pack to the first level okay then season one to four then characters season one to four characters type b and this is a map full of close-ups of the characters which is great and this is the one i used so let's drag it to photoshop release it okay drag this to the bottom till it connects drag this to the top for now okay so for now let's just do it like this so this is the basic structure of the thumbnail now before adding effects to this etc let's add our text and you first need to download the font of fortnite so when i click on text right here i can just add some text 
let's just type Fortnite in caps and you see this is the font of Fortnite and it's called Burbank Big Condensed. I will put a link to that font in the description so you can just download it and continue with the tutorial. Okay, so right now we did type something. When you just click on the site right here, you will see that the border disappears. When we then click on V on the keyboard or right here, click on this tool, you can move it around and you can also transform it by making sure it's selected right here and then click Ctrl or Command T. But right here you see that there is a really big empty space right here and I will show you why. Click on enter, double click on Fortnite and you see this is the text area so we will need to make it smaller like this and like this, okay, till it fits perfectly and then just click on the side right here. Now when we press Ctrl T you can see that this is the border so this is perfect so let's just make it a bit bigger okay <laughs> a bit this is a lot bigger but it's perfect for a thumbnail because you always need to keep in mind that the thumbnail will be very small so while editing always zoom out a bit to see how everything looks and if you're not making things too small etc so let's zoom in again let's make this a bit smaller because it's pretty big Okay, for now, let's do this. Now, there are two other words on my thumbnail, which is thumbnail and tutorial. Now, when you hold your Alt key and you make sure that this tool is selected, you can just drag on something and it will create a copy. My Photoshop is in Dutch. I will try to translate everything. I had problems setting it to English, so I will have to work with this right now, but I'm sure it will not be a problem. Okay, let's continue. Alt again copy it again for the third text okay and now let's double click on fortnite and then write thumbnail okay and then right here on fortnite and tutorial so this is the text that i will be using now to change the color you can just click on the text and then right here on the right you can change the style you can change the font right here. You can change it from bold to regular if that's an option for the font you downloaded, which is not the case right now. And right here you can change the color. Just click on it and then just make it white. Click on the second one. Okay, again, white. So this is the basic structure of the thumbnail. We will make thumbnail a bit smaller like this. Okay maybe a bit bigger okay and then fortnite a bit bigger than the rest like this now a very useful tip when positioning everything is that you can bring the rulers into your screen so you can position everything perfectly when you want to get rid of the ruler you just drag it to the side again if you don't see these rulers right here you can press ctrl r and they will appear or disappear or you can change it in window also then to get a ruler you just click on the side you hold your key and you drag it also from the top you can do that too okay let's press ctrl z and then add one ruler like this okay so then you can zoom in and you can really make sure it's perfect. So it starts at the same point or around the same point. You can zoom in and do it pixel by pixel if you think that's needed. Okay, let's do it again right now because of OCD. And then just scroll out and this is the basic structure of the thumbnail. And now let's start adding some nice effects. The first thing we will do is adding drop shadow to our text. So you click on the text and then right here you can see which text you just selected. So just click on the text and then right here you can see it selected in the layers. And let's double click on it. Make sure you don't double click on the name because that's for renaming it. Double click right next to it on the empty space. And then you get this settings window, which is for the Fortnite text. Right here on the bottom, you can click on drop shadow. And then right here, make sure that black is selected. Then right here, move all the sliders to the beginning. So you don't have drop shadow. And then increase the size right here 
to how big you want it to be. Then you can use this slider right here to make it less obvious but I really like it because it's a dark scene, it's kind of a night scene, so the drop shadow can be very dark without being too noticeable. Let's click on OK, and now we want to do the same thing for the other text, and a quick way to do it is right here in the layers. Again, you hold your Alt key to copy things, and then you just drag the drop shadow to another layer, and it will just copy it. Again, drag it to this layer and now you have drop shadow on all the layers and it may look a bit harsh but when you zoom out you see that when it's this small it really is not a problem. So let's zoom in again and now we will create the effect of the background right here so it looks like the text is popping out. So let's go back to our thumbnail. Then right here in the layers, select the cinematic background. If you're not sure if you selected the right thing, you can click on the eye in front of it to see what disappears when you click on it. So then you see that we have selected the right layer. Now, instead of double clicking on it for adding effects, we will go to the top to filter, then to blur, and then to radial blur. Okay, so then we get these settings right here. And by default, it will be like this. So you have to click on zoom, then click on best quality and then increase this slider till you can see on the preview right here that it will really be very kind of zoomed in, warped in. I don't know how you have to call it. Let's click on OK to see how it turned out. OK, and this is the effect we have right now, which already looks great, but I think that it looks better when you position it behind your text right here in the middle. Now to do that we can't just drag it because you see right here then we have an empty space. So instead we will have to transform it so make sure it is selected right here then press ctrl T and I will get a message that Photoshop will disable the effect while transforming because otherwise it's very hard for your PC to render everything. So now we will have to make it bigger. So just grab one of the corners or one of the sides and just make it bigger like this. Now right here you see there's a cross on the image and the middle of the cross will be the middle of our blur. So we will have to position that cross right here in the middle and you see that we still have some blanket space so make it even bigger and then position the cross behind the text like this. Now click on enter and you will see when it's finished rendering that right here this is the effect we have right now and it already looks like our end result. Now the next thing I did, maybe you didn't notice it immediately, but this character right now is kind of looking this way, okay, so to the right. And right here it is looking to the left, to the inside of our thumbnail, to the text. That's better, so let's go back to our thumbnail. Click on this character to make sure it's selected. Okay, right here you see this layer is selected. Click on the eye to make sure it's the right one. Then go to edit on the top, go to transformation and click on turn horizontally. Okay, so now you see it just turned horizontally and now it's looking to the inside. Maybe you will have to reposition it or something. I will make it a bit bigger because that looks better most of the time. So it kind of gets out of the frame right here. Click on OK. And now when we zoom out, this is the thumbnail we have right now. And now the next thing and I think is the final thing to do is adding more contrast, making the colors pop, adding some brightness and for that we will be using the adjustments tab right here. If you don't see this go to window and then right here select adjustments and then it will appear right here or in this bar so you can just expand it. Okay, so for me it's right here and the first thing we will be adding is color tone, so that's this icon right here. Let's click on it and now it appears on top of the layers but we only want to affect the background so we will have to drag it down on top of the background right here. So what did we add right now? This is an adjustment layer and it affects all layers below it. So right here we can see all layers below is actually this layer which is useless and we can just delete it. 
So the only layer below is the background layer. Now let's say that there are other layers below this one and you don't want to affect them. You can make sure that the adjustment layer only affects the layer below it by holding your Alt key and then in between of the two layers when this icon appears on your mouse just click and then you see right here you did add a little arrow in the front so that means that this adjustment layer will only affect the layer below it. Now let's click on the adjustment layer and right here we can change the color by dragging this color tone but that's not what we want. Let's click Ctrl Z. We want to add some saturation right here so you can make it pop more. Of course not too much because then you get this and that's not good. So let's go back to zero and up it a bit till we think that it's alright. Okay, so this looks pretty nice and now I did say that we don't need this but we can change the color a bit to make it more purple or more pink. Let's see if it works or not. So let's drag it to the right a bit and then you can see the color is getting more like this skin right here. So that's pretty nice. Let's zoom out a bit and maybe when you see it that small you think oh the color isn't that good or I can't see the difference between the skin and the background. So you can go to the adjustment layer again and then you can change it till you think okay this pops more because right now I see when I make it more purple the skin pops more so actually that's better so we will leave it like this okay so now the next thing to do is adding a bit of saturation to this right here to this skin so click on the skin and of course we already have a saturation layer so we can just click on alt and drag it on top of this right here and hold alt again move it between these layers and click so it only affects the layer below of course we will have to reset these so we can start from zero. So this is how the skin looks. And the only thing I will do is adding a bit more saturation. Not too much, but when it's very small, you see it's better if there's more saturation. When I disable it, you kind of see the difference and it's better that it pops more. If you want me to show you other techniques to create thumbnails and other IDs, etc., Comment it below and maybe I will make a playlist dedicated to creating thumbnails. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to learn more about video editing, streaming, getting better at streaming, graphic design for your online brand, etc. Make sure you click the subscribe button because then this channel is just perfect for you. Thanks for watching and I hope that I will see you in my next video. Have a good day.